CIP, otherwise known as clean in place, is the most common method when it comes to cleaning conical fermenters. In this video, I'm going to show you my process and what I do. And I've cleaned both on the home brewing level and professional level, and I use the same method for both. So without further ado, let's break into it. First thing you want to do is ensure that your glycol lines uh, are removed, unless you don't plan to move the vessel. I have to move mine just to make less of a mess. So disconnecting those, I try to blow out all the glycol from the coil inside beforehand to ensure it stays in the reservoir. And then I bring it out into the driveway to do the first step, which is a cold water or tap water rinse that you're just using to get as much as the organic material that was left over from fermentation out from the vessel. A little pro tip, when you are done kegging and you're using CO2 to push it out, usually around that 10 to 12 uh, PSI range, if you leave the fermenter filled, you can use that PSI or that built up pressure from kegging to use to push out whatever was left in the fermenter. Something simple saves you some time and it's pretty damn cool. In the meantime, makes quite a bit of a mess, but it's worth it. Once you have depressurized the vessel, it's time to open it up and see what kind of mess we have in store. This was about 16 gallons of an American wheat beer, nothing too crazy, but it still leaves a huge mess, as you can see here. So break out the hose, spray it down as best you can, and get it as clean as you can for the next step. Let's break into the equipment we need to do this. I use a submersible sump pump uh, with a triclover attachment. You're going to need a TC fitting gasket or whatever you use, and you need a hose with a valve on it. I prefer to use the valve because that is actually my transfer valve from my boil kettle when I knock out my war into my fermenter after my counterflow chiller. You're going to need a way to direct the flow into the bucket. If you have leg extensions on your vessel, you can raise it up and usually fit a bucket under it. I don't have that luxury, so you see me sketchily putting it on a fold-out table with a about a foot and a half extension with a downward elbow so that when I pump it through the top, it flows back down into the bucket. You want to take that pressure gauge off. Any boost in spikes and pressure is not good for those gauges, so make sure you ensure that that gauge is off. You want the spray ball with the valve, and I'll show you why here in a little bit. And you need to ensure that you have a vent. Otherwise, you create a vacuum and you can crunch your fermenter like a soda can. You're gonna wanna mix up whatever cleaner you're using per directions, not as I do here, willy nilly, uh, but it's your fermenter, do what you want. Spray ball going to the sump pump and the sump pump is going to go into the bucket of PBW mix and then the bottom valve is open so that when the pump pumps the mixture through the spray ball it then waterfalls down inside of the fermenter and out the bottom and it just recirculates At this point, I haven't removed anything that was on the fermenter minus that pressure gauge. Other than that, I have two vents open and we're gonna set the timer for 20 minutes on the main cycle. Once the main cycle of the spray ball up the top is done, we have two more. We have one through the racking arm, which ensures the inside of the racking arm is clean. And then we have another through the blow off, each of which are five minutes. So in a total 30 minutes of cleaning time, Once your 30 minute CIP cycle is done, then I like to remove everything from the vessel. Before I do absolutely everything, I like to just run it through the rest of the ports that are on the fermenter, just to give me a little bit of peace of mind, uh, give me the warm and fuzzies. Again, you're gonna check every port 
and brush using uh, whatever brush you prefer hopefully not metal to get any gunk left over a flashlight is highly recommended as well to ensure that there is nothing left in any of these ports but this seems to do the trick Once you've went through every single port, now we can fully disassemble the fermenter. So you're taking off the bottom, you're taking off the racking arm, you're taking off everything that was in there, and you're gonna soak it in the same PBW that you just used to recirculate with. Uh, I like to take the hose one last time, this is the last time I'll use tap water, to give everything inside rinse, inside and out, uh, trying to remove any of that PBW resi residue that you possibly can before the next step, which is a hot water burst rinsing. And as you can see, it did a killer job and I've never had an issue before. So like I said, disassemble everything and we're gonna let that soak. And then before we move on to the next step, we will have cleaned every single part that we just removed, uh, rinsed, and then we will reassemble again. After I've rinsed and cleaned everything, I still like to do one last hot water rinse just to give me those warm and fuzzies that I talked about earlier. It makes me feel good and it's what the manufacturer recommends and I highly suggest doing it. That's about 160 degree water and so I'll run it for about a three to five second burst, turn off the pump, let it all drain and then do it again until there is no more residue left inside that's coming out the discharge after we have completely rinsed every part of this vessel it's time to sanitize i use star sand it makes a bloody mess but it works a damn well so i do five minutes in the spray ball five minutes in the blow off and five minutes through the racking arm when you're done with the sanitizing cycle ensure that all valves are closed before you turn the pump off to ensure that there is no negative pressure that would then suck oxygen back in. I love to use CO2 to not only push all the remaining sanitizer out of the vessel, but also to leak check it, because I tend to sanitize the day before so that I set it at a certain pressure. When I come back the next day, it should still be at that pressure, and I know that I have a sealed up fermenter, and it's still sanitized from the day before. Uh, dump all the sanitizer out of all the valves including the sample port and what we're gonna do here is keep the positive pressure in the vessel and remove this spray ball assembly so that we can reattach our PRV but doing so in a sanitary manner by keeping that positive pressure knowing that nothing is going into the fermenter and you take that sanitized PRV put that on and you don't forget to reattach the glycol lines for your next batch set the set temperature properly so that it's not cold crash when you go to ferment your next batch and that's it you guys cip your vessel it's sanitized and ready for a brand new batch to head into it and make some great beer i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you found any value in this video please hit the like button and if you enjoy these type of videos please consider subscribing if you haven't already and if so i will see you guys on the next video